Thank you, Martin. Yes, runners going out onto the course for this download, the Vickers.bet Air app uh, Mayor's National Hunt Maiden Hurdle. The first one out onto the course is number eight, the Eminent Goose, who is uh, owned by the Ben Pauling Racing Club, trained by Ben Pauling, Dylan Whelan riding, claiming 10 dark green, large light blue spots for number eight, the Eminent Goose. Followed down by seven, Nancy Till, owned by Lady Susan Brooke, trained by Max Young and ridden by Robbie Dunn. Wears orange with a brown disc, brown cap and orange spots, number seven, Nancy Till. Then we have six, Molly Brown, owned by Mr. T.C. Frost, trained by Anthony Honeyball. Rex Dingle riding, black, red disc, sleeves and cap, the colours of six, uh, Molly Brown. Molly Brown is being uh, followed down by horse number two, uh, Coolini Moore who's uh, owned here by a Twist of Time syndicate. For Robert Wolford, Nick Schofield in the saddle, wearing royal blue with white cross belts, white sleeves, royal blue stars, and a white cap with a royal blue star for number uh, two, Coolini Moore. Behind Coolini Moore in the red hood is number five, Micro Normus, owned by the Micro Managers, trained by David Pipe. Jack Tudor riding, red, white chevron, chevrons on the sleeves, a red cap with a white diamond for number five, Micro Normus. Then we have the grey, that is number four, Ushuri, who's uh, owned by the BB Racing Club, trained by Venetia Williams. Ned Fox is riding, claiming seven. Yellow with a purple star, purple and yellow Diablo on the sleeves. Yellow cap, purple star for number four, Ui Shari. Uh, also going down is number one, Can You See Her? Owned by Mrs. A.E. Goodwin, trained by Polly Gundry. Johnny Burke rides dark green, beige sash and armlets for number one, Can You See Her? And the lineup completed by number three, Henrietta Bay, who's owned by the IRC and Maloney Racing, trained by Warren Greatrex, Sean Bowen in the plate, emerald green, yellow chevron, royal blue and red half sleeves, and a white cap for number three, Henrietta Bay. The uh, mayor's uh, gathering at the post then for race number two. Two and a half miles is the trip this time. They'll jump one flight down the back, three up the straight. Another complete circuit will follow, ten in total to negotiate. Betting's headed by uh, Wee Shari, who's six to four. Three to one, Micro Normus. Seven to two for Henrietta Bay. And seven to one, the Eminent Goose. Eleven to one, Coolini Moore. And eighteen to one, Nancy Till. Eighty to one for Molly Brown. And can you see her? is at 100 to 1. Runners uh, down at the post then, as I mentioned, and we are now just a few seconds away from post time. So final call to place your bets on the second of the afternoon. Uh, they are due off imminently. Starters on the rostrum here. Number three, Henrietta Bay, just a little bit on her toes down at the start. And uh, the eminent goose is not quite with the others just yet, who are now circling to come in. And the flag has uh, gone up, although Henrietta Bay has just drifted onto the chase course briefly. And the eminent goose, he's also very edgy as well, has just whipped around under Dylan Whelan. So those two uh, mares just playing up. And uh, Dylan Whelan's just been unseated by the eminent goose there at the start. He's not in the saddle. Quickly remounted by Wayne Hutchinson. Not that the eminent goose is particularly happy about it, proving quite a handful. Rest of them just about to take a turn by the looks of it. Henrietta Bay continues to be on her toes somewhat as well, but being held together by Sean Bowen. So the start has just dropped the flag for a moment now and trying to get the eminent goose to just remain calm, which she is at the moment. Flag goes up again. And they're being called in.
And that's it. They're away, and the Emerald Goose at the back of the field has jumped away with them for this download the Vickers dot bet at Mayor's National Hunt Maiden Hurdle. And they go towards flight number one with Oui Cherie, the grey, stepping out in the hands of Ned Fox to take them over the opening jump. Lands by about a length and a half to... In second position, Micronormous towards the inside in red and white, Henrietta Bay, and wider out to Nancy Till in the orange and brown, and also uh, Coolini Moore tracking over to Sittle, uh, set, uh, Settle in third place, just ahead of Henrietta Bay. There's another length back to Nancy Till now, going along in fifth on the outside of uh, Molly Brown, who's in uh, black and red colours on the running rail, and the rear pair are the grey, can you see her? And the eminent goose, who seems to have settled fairly well despite her antics uh, down at the start as they come back towards the top of the home straight, where they've got three flights in a line. And Hui Shuri, who's been runner up on both of her starts over hurdles at Hereford and Leicester, leading by two lengths to Micro Normus, who's in second, racing towards the inside. Then we have Coolini Moore on her rules debut, racing in blue and white. Just in front of Henrietta Bay and Sean Bowen, who's wearing the green, yellow, red, blue and white colours. Molly Brown next up. Nancy Till towards the outside for Robbie Dunn. And then the eminent goose. And can you see her pops over just about last of all under Johnny Burke. Would probably be about five lengths off the leader, Wee Cherie, with her ears pricked coming down towards flight number four. Wee Cherie. Over ahead, these mares all jumping uh, fairly well to this point. To Micro Normus in second position, who has managed to win a, a bumper at Exeter before two runs over hurdles at Wincanton and Weatherby. And then Coolini Moore up third on the outside of Henrietta Bay, whose only run in the points field was a win at Carrigarostig. And Henrietta Bay is followed by Molly Brown. It's her hurdling debut. Nancy Till on the outside for trainer Max Young, who had a welcome winner at Market Raisin yesterday. And Can You See Her continues with the eminent goose at the back of the field. They head down off onto the back straight. Flight number five will be the next. And Oui Cherie, Ned Fox leading by... Still around two lengths to Micro Normus in second. And Coolini Moore, almost in a dispute of that spot on the outside in third. Henrietta Bay four. Now, Molly Brown has just been niggled away from the last couple of flights down on the inner. But he's still well in touch as they proceed on towards the middle one down the back with little change in the order. And it's We Cherie, Micro Normus on the inside of Coolini Moore. Second and third, Henrietta Bay over in four. They're followed in fifth place by Nancy Till, the eminent goose right on the outside, Molly Brown on the inner. And can you see her? Is still the back marker as they go through their point of departure and on towards four from home. Final flight down the back, We Cherie pops over very nicely. Can you see her? Didn't do so well at the rear of the field and crashed for the top of the flight as Molly Brown is uh, shaken along by Rex Dingle. And they go into the far corner and they've got three quarters of a mile to go. We Cherie by a length and a half. Micro Normus and Coolini Moore. The Eminent Goose moving up round the outside and closing in to fourth place now ahead of Henrietta Bay. Molly Brown continuing to be pushed along. Nancy Till has also come off the bridle. Can you see her has not been out of last place as they race on to the top of the home straight and Oui Cherie still the one to catch bowling along. The Eminent Goose moving up into second on the outside past Coolini Moore. Micro Normus is in fourth and being ridden as Oui Cherie jumps well over three out but so too did the Eminent Goose who's gone off in pursuit. There was a mistake in fourth from Micro Normus. Molly Brown is plugging on in fifth position. Henrietta Bay did not pick up and Oui Cherie 
three coming down towards the second from home. Hasn't seen a rival so far. She's clear by four lengths. We Shari over the eminent goose who jumps it in second place. He's being ridden. And then back in third is uh, Kulini Moore. Uh, Molly Brown still plugging on for places in behind, but We Shari with a commanding advantage at the final flight. And she jumps that one as well as she's jumped all the others. She's over it with a clear lead from the eminent goose. Then came Coolini Moore and up to the line. Off the mark over hurdles at the third attempt after two second places. It's We Shari. In second was the eminent goose. Coolini Moore ran on in third. And so too did Molly Brown in fourth. I gather. Uh, you've got to make a few quid these days while you can. 11 to 10 and 6 to 4. It's getting close to the head of the market mm, now. It is. And George Sir, well, he's not out of it at all, George Sir. No. Good run behind Man Tempest. Um, be behind a subsequent winner or ahead of a subsequent winner. And then this effort behind Cuthbert Dibble more recently. It was uh, com in a completely different league. Ended up being favourite for the big novice handicap at Sandown, wasn't he, he off did. the back of this. So it's absolutely no disgrace that he's being left toiling, chasing that rival home. Mm. Won't find the ground as exacting as uh, <laughs> Leicester. Well, he won't, will he? I mean, that's... Would, you, would you think it was worse at Leicester than it was at Sandown or about the same? Well, on a scale of... Uh, testing conditions um, generally Leicester would would get to the top on the hurdles course for me during an average winter yeah but I think those two days at Sandown at the start of the month were particularly exacting because of all the weather they had thrown at them it did everything in that week it snowed it rained mm -hmm. I mean how Andrew Cooper managed to find a, a racing line that wasn't underwater by the time they got to Saturday I don't know it was a, it was um Given given how dry a lot of the winter has been, it did suddenly did suddenly turn into a morass. It did, yeah. That was when nothing was running because um, the ground was unsuitably quick and they were all waiting for softer ground. That's wasn't right. It? Yeah. Yeah. As now they've got see, softer no. ground, they're all here. Yeah. All and five it's eleven to eight now, the favourite. Yeah, obviously your your legion of supporters have <laughs> taken your advice, remortgaged. It's all part of a cunning plan. I said, wait till it gets out to six to four, and then go in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Anything else you'd like to add in the last ten seconds or so before they jump here? Uh, no. Good. One final turn, hopefully, and we should be uh, set to go. Looks as though George Sam might be um, pushing the pace along. It looks that way. Flags are up. As the before. Sophie Upton ready for them on top of the rostrum. Let's go back up to the box and rejoin David. Thank you, Stuart. So they are on the approach. George's Saints ready to, to get on with it. And now he can. They're off for the watch on Racing TV Novices Hurdle, heading to the first of nine flights. And George's Saint is into a lead of about four lengths to Haraki Gulf, Hamino, second and third with Hit the Kettle and Marla Moon just taking his first hurdle in public in fifth place. So George's Saint and Charlie Deutsch leading by two and a half to Haraki Golf and Chris Ward just closing the gap on the leader a little bit and in front of Hamino and Jamie Moore in third place and the two outsiders are sharing fourth just about at the moment. Marla Moon now under Harry Skelton and Hit the Kettle and Connor Ring as they turn into the home straight. And it is George's Saint that is followed by Haraki Gulf with Hamino carrying a winner's penalty today in third place. Hit the kettle and Marla Moon watching on from the back as they now come into the wings of the second. George's Saint, Haraki Gulf and Hamino, all three nimble enough over that as they now move on towards the third. Hit the kettle is just in fourth ahead of Marla Moon as they come to what will be the last next time around. No blemishes from any of the five there. George's Saint, a two-time French chase winner. Second on his last three runs over hurdles at Bangor on D and twice at Leicester. Setting out to try and make all today and crosses the winning line in front with one circuit to go. George's Saint, followed by Haraki Gulf on the outside of 
Plumpton maiden winner Hermino, since gone on to come second in a Sandown handicap just over two weeks ago, sits in third place, just behind Haraki Golf with uh, Hit the Kettle on the outside of Marla Moon, still sharing fourth as they continue their journey on towards flight number four. Heading away from us, and uh, George's Saint is in front of Haraki Golf. Coming into this with Hermino still in third, about three lengths off the lead. Haraki Golf wasn't fluent over that in second. Hermino a bit closer on landing. Hit the kettle and Marla Moon still the back two. George's Saint is the leader to Haraki Golf, who won his bumper here on his debut at the end of 2021. And second twice in 2023 over hurdles at Hereford and at Utoxeter. Looking to go one better today. Still chases the leader, George's Saint, in second place. Hermino is in third. Hit the kettle and Marla Moon, both at very big prices. And they're both filling the last two positions at the moment as they continue on a descent towards the back straight. They've still got five of the nine flights to jump in this watch on Racing TV. Novices Hurdle, our second race at Warwick this afternoon. And uh, Charlie Deutsch on 24 winners for this campaign is in front on George's Saint to Haraki Golf. Debbie Cole's runner in second. On the inside, Jamie Moore looking for 49 winner of the season in third place. And then uh, hit the kettle. And uh, finally, Marla Moon. They now emerge from behind the trees over on the far side, taking the left-hander and running on towards the fifth. Haraki Gulf is trying to get closer to press George's Saint. Hermino still sitting in third position as they reach the first of three in the back straight. George's Saint to in second position, Haraki Gulf. A length and a half to Hermino in third place. Jamie Moore pushing no buttons to this point. Hit the kettle is currently in front of Marla Moon. The middle one in the back straight. Neither the first or second were that fluent, but it certainly didn't stop George's Saint running. George's Saint is still in front by a length to Haraki Golf. Hermino in third. And the other two both well in touch. Hit the kettle and Marla Moon as they've completed a circuit. Running to three out. George's Saint with the advantage there. A little untidy. Haraki Golf is ridden along on the outside. Hermino, jockey hasn't blinked yet in third position. Hit the kettle and Marla Moon fourth and fifth. There wouldn't even be five lengths separating the five runners on the turn back towards home. They're still led by George's Saint. Haraki Golf trying to launch an assault. Hermino is in third place. Then hit the kettle and Marla Moon. So turning for home. Haraki Golf ridden along almost alongside George's Saint but the grey still leads by a neck or so. Hermino in third place. About to be asked for an effort. Jamie Moore asked Asks him to try and extend as they run to the second last. George's Saint still has the initiative here. Leads by a length. Hermino on the inside. On the outer Haraki Gulf. They're clear. They've hit the kettle. The Grey's got a challenger on either side now. Hermino on the inner. Haraki Gulf on the outer. Three in a line over the last. Hermino comes to press and hamper George's Saint. Haraki Gulf the inside. So Hermino running green in front but coming clear. Close to the finish. And Hermino and Jamie Moore will win their second race over hurdles. In in second place was Haraki Gulf, George's Saint third, then hit the kettle and Marla Moon. Amino has got uh, the job done seeing off Haraki Gulf and George Snare. And he's done it quite readily in the end, despite having a little bit of a wobble after the last, a little bit of a run around. Uh, you suggested he was the safest option, Jonathan, in the ah. race. You were right. Despite drifting out. Ah, uh, you've got a much bigger price than you might have expected. You, you, yeah, well, he was odds on this morning, wasn't he? Mm. Uh, 11 to 8 just pulled the off, and off a muddling pace, he's cricket up Yes. Yeah. Hurdled well. I was impressed with his hurdling technique generally through the race. Yes, he was quite quick, wasn't he? Better yeah. than the other two, anyway. Yes. Um... I think probably with the benefit of hindsight, Haraki Gulf would have benefited from a stiffer test of stamina. Not sure uh, he'd have beaten the winner anyway, no, but... No, but yeah, it, he would have done, because you know he stays further. And mm. I, I mean, he really didn't start racing flat out until nearly off the home bend. No. Um, and Georges Saint, therefore, has pretty much had the run of things from the front, and he's finding winning elusive. He hurdles. is, here's the head on. And I think we'll probably find that the winner does uh, slightly interfere with him. Yeah. Certainly intimidating him there as he's hanging. And then goes Ooh. 
goes yes. across him, generally inconveniences him, hangs around a bit, but uh, yes, looks a bit awkward there as he's hanging to his right, but nevertheless, he's well on top. It's only his fifth run. Might uh, still be part of the learning. They're quite tricky conditions as well, aren't they? Very strong wind. I know it's a tailwind in the straight. It wouldn't have been blowing him sideways, but no, um, that might not have helped. Um, shouldn't do a lot with his handicap, Mark, should he? No. Beaten them already rated rivals in the fashion that his rating suggested he might be capable of doing, notwithstanding his penalty. Mm. 11 to 8, he's been returned, winning again over Hurdle. been the drifter and market support coming for the other two. Ned Tanner, very game, I thought, last time out at Kelso. He is improving. He's got a good attitude. He got away with a couple of errors at Kelso last time out. I suppose he's got to come and do it away from Kelso now, hasn't he? Because um, his wins over fences so far, in fact, all of his races so far, fences have been at, at Kelso. There he is, in the hands of Sean Quinn. And Sean, yet another good day, whether it be yesterday afternoon, he could double uh, on the afternoon. Originally, the one we haven't mentioned is, is Arthur's Q, who himself has had a fine season. Yeah, he's had a great time of it, hasn't he? He just came to an end last time out. Maybe that was one run too many. He might have just been ready for a little bit of a, a break at that point. He's had a month off Arthur's Key, but three wins prior to that. We've seen it time and again with um, these horses Ben Haslam gets, dropping the weights and then come good and, and, and really thrive. And Arthur's Key certainly did that with those three wins on the spin earlier on in the season but he's been hit pretty hard by the handicapper as a result of that. He's gone from 107 up 19 pounds now, back to 126. OK, so Richmond Lake, King Going Horse, mm. who Brian Hughes has been on board recently. He's sitting out for that stupid ban. He received a Doncaster a couple of weeks ago. Theo Gillard, who recently rode a 75th winner and lost his right to claim, is on board. He'll know him well from home and at so he's better for no one as well. He doesn't look the most straightforward. Yeah, I think that's that's very fair. You know, he, he's he's... He's going to be quite keen going, and he's not sort of the most natural jumper at this moment in time of his career, is he? Um, but I'm sure Theo knows him anywhere from home as, as well. I'm sure the others will want to stay away from him. Remember, whether over Christmas time, he actually kicked a Muller goal who was withdrawn that day. Mm. The race he won, so he seems as edgy in the paddock. That's just him. Yeah, we, we know he, on his good days. Remember him chasing him. John Bond here yeah, he ran second year. to him, didn't he, in the Grade Two hurd novice yeah. hurdle last season. So he's got plenty of ability. Um, I've, you know, he's, there's a bit of room for improvement with his jumping for sure. But this race sets up nicely for him, I thought, Richmond Lake. But like I say, he was six to four favourite this morning. He's out to eleven to four. So there's a there's an opposing view according to the betting market. Yep, second in the Rossington Main just over twelve months ago over hurdles to John Bond. Here he is over fences today with. Three inform rivals. You know, yeah, we, we've only got four, but why have yeah, we only got four? Because you've, when you get a quartet of sort of inform, a couple of progressive horses. Who... It's certainly not easy pickings, is it? If you were looking looking at the race at deck stage, wondering whether to run or not, you know, you, you're in against some some improvers. Only the bold's gone up twenty pound for his two wins, but that just underlines. You could argue it's harsh enough, but it kind of underlines more than anything how easily he's won those races. Um, only the bold and like I said before the way that he's been travelling through he's been really powering through those races over a bit further I wouldn't worry too much about the dropping distance for him but maybe there'll be some other targets sort of later on in the year at back over over three miles given the winning that he's done over that trip already OK should be pretty much good to go here for this Bob Few Scoops Curlake's 70th Novice Limited Handicap Steeplechase Starters flag is aloft. Let's get up to John and get the call.
Now, I'll thank you ever so much. Walking forward, then. Yeah, Richmond Lake, front rank. Looks as though the other three want to hand him the lead here early. Interesting to see how his jumping holds up. Decent race, this, isn't it? One of the, one of the best of the day. Coming in, they're off and racing. Jumping away for the bob. A few scoops. Curse Lake's 70th. Novices handicap steeplechase. And it's Richmond Lake who goes straight into the lead. Approaching fence number one. 15 to take, all told. Good jump from Ned Tanner in second place. Arthur's Key settles down in third. And only the bold, our early back marker. Racing towards fence number two with Richmond Lake holding a decent advantage over the other three rivals who all jump that second fence well. So Richmond Lake showing out in front from Ned Tanner. Behind those, Arthur's Key and only the bold on a hat-trick and weighted with at the back end of the field early on as they swing round in glorious Merseyside sunshine at the moment towards the home straight for the first time. And fence number three next, and it'll be Richmond Lake still holding this easy three-length advantage over Ned Tanner, Arthur's Key, and only the Bold. So a line of four fences down the home straight. Richmond Lake will be the first to show. Those old ears flicking around, anticipating what lays ahead. Jumped it well. A little slow at the back was only the Bold. Ned Tanner still in second place, and Arthur's Key sitting in third position. So Richmond Lake clearly taking it all in, coming down towards the next fence. He's over safely, quite exuberant as well, to lead from a keen going, Arthur's Key and Ned Tanner to the inside, and only the bold still watches on from the back of the field. Richmond Lake then at the next fence. Again, jumping it well. He's gone slightly off to the left uh, over the last two. And now races down towards what will be the last next time around. It's fence number six here on this first circuit. And Richmond Lake continues to show. Just edging left again there from Ned Tanner, Arthur's Key, and the back marker, only the bold. So coming by us then with six behind them and another nine to take. Richmond Lake just steadies the tempo up a little bit. Richmond Lake too clear. Ned Tanner and Sean Quinlan sit second. Arthur's Key in third place, and then two or three lengths away, only the bold. All four runners have had really decent seasons. Good race unfolding here as Richmond Lake takes them to the far side of the track. Richmond Lake by three lengths or so, and they'll jump five down the back. And Richmond Lake will approach the first of them with this Advantage of four lengths over Ned Tanner, Arthur's Key, and only the Bold. Richmond Lake then in towards the next. Again, he goes left slightly. I don't think it's having much of an impact on his race itself, but it's just a habit he's developed. Richmond Lake coming down towards the next of their fences, and so long as it doesn't get more pronounced, he should be okay. He did it again there. Ned Tanner's closed up a bit, so too as. Arthur's key and the back marker is only the bold. And Richmond Lake now sits only just three parts of a length clear over the next fence. Only the bold in quite close there to that fence in last place. And he's still five or six lengths off the leader, Richmond Lake, who comes through his departure point and now over the next fence. Still going left, Richmond Lake, but still leading. Ned Tanner second, Arthur's key in third place and only the bold is still in last position. This is the last fence down the back. Richmond Lake, Ned Tanner, Arthur's Key, and only the Bold. As they move out of the back now, left hand down and towards the home straight. The final four fences await them in the home straight in this Bob Few Scoops Curse Lake 70th Novices Limited Handicap Steeplechase. Richmond Lake, what reserves has he for this? challenge of the home straight attempting to make all he's turning in with a two length advantage over ned tanner in second arthur's key third and only the bold still in last place ned tanner putting it up to richmond lake here as they race to four out richmond lake jump well ned tanner still second in third is arthur's key and only the bold under a bit of pressure to try and close might be difficult from there 
third last fence now. Richmond Lake in close there. Got away with it, but he went markedly out to the left. Ned Tanner's still there. Now only the bold is getting up ahead of steam in behind with Arthur's key next and the second last. Richmond Lake hit the top of that as well. He's just jumping, he's got a little more sloppy, but he's still in front from Ned Tanner. Then Arthur's key and only the bold as they race now on towards the last and Richmond Lake is still in front. Richmond Lake, good jump again out to the left, but he's landed some four to five lengths clear of Ned Tanner. Then Arthur's key and only the bold who come home last. His unbeaten run this season is over. But Richmond Lake's going to make all here for Theo Gillard and Donald McCain. Richmond Lake the winner, beating Ned Tanner, Arthur's key and only the bold. Yeah, Richmond Lake makes all and wins for uh, Donald McKay and Theo Gillard. Seemed it's a really good effect on him. And beats Ned Tanner in second place for Nick Alexander and Sean Quinnan. First two well clear for the rest. And he's not the easiest. And